Hi there, I'm Craig Shaper with Associated Engineering. I'm going to be presenting on the significance of construction stage analysis for composite bridges. In this presentation, we will cover the following items. Firstly, we need to a quick review of uh, composite design principles. Uh, I will discuss some basic analysis design procedures following the simple, uh, the, the principle, keep it simple, silly. At this point, we will consider what features would be required of a software program for composite design. And finally, I will share some lessons learned on actual projects, uh, looking at uh, uh, some steel girder composite bridges and uh, pre-stressed uh, concrete uh, girder bridges. I have selected the following projects that I have been involved with to demonstrate different aspects of composite bridges and their construction staging. Let us begin with a quick review of composite design principles. Here um, a superstructure section is shown with uh, steel or concrete girders and an upper concrete slab. We need to determine how much of the slab is effective because the stress lines in the uh, slab converge towards the, the girders the closer you get to the supports. Each country's code uh, provides a formula for the effective width in relation to the effective span. This lower diagram shows the definition of the effective uh, uh, span lengths for exterior spans uh, interior spans and over the internal supports. It also shows that the Canadian and uh, Eurocode assumptions are very similar. This effective slab width is then used to calculate the total composite section properties. Converting the concrete area to an equivalent steel area with the modular ratio N, which is the ratio of the Young's modulus of steel to that of concrete. For sustained loads, uh, creep occurs uh, requiring the long-term modular ratio uh, of uh, three times that of the short-term modular ratio. As a last comment, uh, please note the difference uh, in the neutral axis of the composite section from uh, that uh, when the concrete is uncracked to that when it is cracked over the piers. The neutral axis uh, goes further down. And uh, cracking typically occurs uh, around 15% into each span. A composite section is inherently a section built in stages. And the loads applied to each stage are locked in to that active part of, this, uh, 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 of that stage. Therefore, the stresses onto any part is the summation of the stresses from each stage. Namely, on the steel alone, um, we have the steel uh, self weight and the wet concrete weight. Onto the long term composite section, uh, we have load such, long term loads such as superimposed dead load. And onto the short term composite section, uh, uh, short term loads like traffic, traffic loads. And the total stress distribution uh, is the addition of all of those. This elastic stress history is used for the service limit state stress and deflection checks of all sections. However, for ultimate uh, capacity checks, the elastic stress distribution is only used for class 3 and 4 sections where web buckling is an issue. For class 1 and 2 sections, the plastic capacity of the section can be used. This diagram shows the stress distribution when the plastic neutral axis is in the concrete slab. And this diagram shows the stress distribution when the plastic neutral axis is in the steel section. For a composite section to be effective, it requires adequate shear transfer at the interface between parts. For uh, casting place applications, it's common to use continuous rows of shear studs. And these are either installed in the factory or installed in the field, as we see in this photo. The advantage of installing in the field is that there is easier access over the top plate during erection and 
there is more space to install the form hangers and deck formwork. Where uh, full uh, width precast slabs uh, are used, the shear studs are clustered into pockets, which are subsequently grouted. Another option for full depth precast panels is to provide a connection via reinforcement loops and shear studs in cast in place stitch pores. Here we see one panel being hoisted into place, the reinforcement loops uh, 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 out the sides, and uh, um, with the connection with the shear studs along the main girder and uh, along each floor beam. The shear connection between pre-stressed girders and the cast in place deck is provided by, uh, uh, by shear strips and here the, we see the shear connection at the top of both the pre-stressed girders and the transverse cross beam support. I will briefly discuss some procedures following showing the progression from a preliminary to final design. For preliminary design, we initially consider the, uh, a single girder, starting with uh, the tributary effects onto a single girder. From, uh, uh, from that, we can uh, uh, do the preliminary sizing by hand or design program. The, we need to analyze the composite section stages and uh, consider the addition of all the effects. Uh, before we can design the composite section. For the final design, the preliminary work is simply extended to the full structure. Whether our structure is an uncomplicated square single span bridge, as shown in this general arrangement, or a more complex multi-span bridge, possibly a curved alignment or skew supports, we can simplify our design by building up our understanding of the structure in stages. For both of these examples, we will assume the same four girder cross section. Our objective is, will be to develop our preliminary design based on what we consider the critical loading onto the critical girder. For this girder configuration, it's uh, apparent that uh, three lanes can uh, fit over the bridge and the first interior girder can be loaded most heavily. We are just not certain uh, if one or two lanes uh, is more critical because there is a reduction factor for multiple lanes. Here the single truck is positioned with one wheel directly over the critical girder and a distribution factor of uh, 0.73 trucks is calculated. Placing a second truck alongside and using a 90% reduction factor, we see that two lanes is the most critical with a distribution factor of uh, 0.98 trucks. Other items to establish are the other uh, loads such as dead loads and we assign materials to the different parts of the composite section and we define our composite section uh, with the steel girder and the concrete with the effective width that we have already discussed. Before we look at the analysis of the two-span example, it is worth mentioning that uh, the, the practicality of using a beam end support, a beam end uh, release, sorry. Um, it's applied in the initial analysis stage to uh, simulate each span acting as a simple beam for girder self-weight and wet concrete. And the beam end release is subsequently removed to achieve the continuous condition once the uh, composite section is active. For any model, we always need to define material and section properties, followed by defining elements. A range of composite uh, section types can be defined in programs. For example, the steel box girder, the pre-stressed girder, and for our example, the steel eye girder. The parts of the section are defined and the slab and the girder and the um, uh, material properties are defined uh, which allows the short-term and long-term composite um, uh, uh, modulations to be calculated. 
the analysis is uh, separated into stages. Uh, in construction stage one, only the steel girder part one is active. And in construction stage two, the, the concrete slab becomes active. Let us begin the, uh, let us consider the uh, resulting forces from the, from the following plots. For construction stage one, the bending moments are seen in, in part one and uh, there is no uh, negative moment over the supports. In part two, no moments are present because the, the slab is not active. And in construction stage uh, 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 two, we, um, uh, the superimposed dead load on the long-term composite causes the first um, support moments. And in the post-construction stage, the traffic loads are applied to the short-term composite section uh, and it results in moments in part one and smaller loads moments in, in part two but importantly, significant axial forces from the lever arm uh, between the two parts of the composite section. Once the initial planning and preliminary design is complete for, for one girder, the analysis is extended to the full bridge by, by adding the three extra girder lines in our example, uh, adding deck cross sections to uh, to create the distribution between the, the uh, longitudinal girders and any additional traffic lanes would be added and any skews, uh, in our example we had a 20 degree skew. We can now proceed with uh, the final design of the bridge, uh, optimize sections uh, and account for additional effects uh, such as skew. Composite design is also useful in the retrofit of bridges. Uh, in this example, we extended the life of a 44-year-old bridge that had severe, uh, a severely de deteriorated deck. The unique trapezoidal uh, pre-stress girders uh, were strengthened um, with a reinforced concrete overlay, effectively creating a new composite section. This typical deck section shows the existing trapezoidal girder forming part one and the reinforced concrete uh, overlay forming part two of the of the composite section. With the rather non-standard cross-section of this bridge we created a DXF file from AutoCAD with the two parts outlined. Uh, uh, first of all the, the pre-stress girder and, and then the uh, the, the slab. This was imported to the SPC uh, module of uh, uh, MIDAS where the components of the section were again assigned to, to part, part one and part two of the composite section. In turn, this custom section becomes available within the analysis program itself and material properties can be assigned and we see the calculated section properties for part one and for part two of the composite section and the properties of the total composite section. Looking at the construction stages, we see in construction stage one uh, only the original pre-stressed girders are active with some, some cross beams and in the subsequent construction stage the concrete overlay becomes active uh, in the composite section. Considering the examples shown and some of the case studies to follow, I see the, the following program features as necessary for composite analysis and design. Firstly, the availability of section composite parts. Uh, they need to be at least uh, two parts, um, uh, for, uh, for example uh, the, the, the steel and the concrete but preferably uh, uh, more parts because we do have retrofits and uh, I'm going to show an example later with uh, about three parts. Uh, 
having the forces separated in, uh, for each uh, part and also for the total composite section is important and uh, knowing what the interface shear forces are uh, uh, enables us to um, calculate the capacity of the of the shear connectors. Secondly, construction staging tools or organization is necessary uh, to account for uh, the changing statical systems and to record the stress history for service limit state checks and deflections. The stability and capacity calculations need to refer to the particular statical system um, at each stage. And among other items, the inclusion of uh, secondary force effects are important. Lastly, uh, the availability of design modules uh, allow for efficient completion of uh, routine design checks. In the remaining time, I will highlight some composite design aspects in the following bridges that I was involved with. K Street Bridge, located in La Crosse, Wisconsin, was the twinning of an existing crossing of the Mississippi River. The new bridge is seen on the right, and the composite uh, box girder bridge uh, uh, were the approaches to the um, uh, to the arch bridge, which was designed by the Wisconsin DOT. And uh, this particular bridge uh, uh, went past some sensitive computer uh, 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 facilities and had to uh, do some um, impressive maneuvering between the buildings, and that affected our the geometry of our uh, of our bridge. The 45 uh, foot uh, deck width uh, is supported by two trapezoidal boxes, and the advantages uh, the advantages of uh, composite construction included the minimizing of staging, um, accelerated construction. Uh, we gained uh, a good economy of material, and box girders are particularly effective for curved geometry. This rough calculation shows that not only are there effective width considerations for the concrete uh, 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 slab, but also for the for the deck plates at the bottom of the um, of the steel box. Here we see that uh, the only 80% of the bottom plate width is effective close to the supports due to shear lag. The complex reverse horizontal curves and variable crossfalls on this project were quite a challenge uh, as seen in the photo below and, and the cross section. Uh, but we determined an optimal orientation of the box girders to minimize the, the haunch heights. So what we did was we um, um, we established a rule uh, was to keep the girders parallel to with the tops of the of the outer webs, um, and we allowed the the bridge to fly through the geometry in this way, and uh, we fabricated the necessary stressless twist shape into into the girders. The girder pre cambers and the stress calculations took account of the construction sequence. Uh, here we see the uh, uh, segment over the piers being put into place, um, and the last uh, segment being hoisted uh, at the bottom there. Also, with um, uh, curved bridges, uh, both torsional and warping effects were uh, are important considerations. This bridge included uh, 2,600 metric tons of steel, and the superstructure was completed in 34 weeks. Our second case study is the composite pre-stress girder bridge alongside the expansion of the Vancouver Convention Center. It is a 250 meter long, uh, 25 meter wide bridge with uh, 39 meter spans. Uh, this was required to miss the, the building entrances below. When people visit the convention center on the upper streetscape level uh, with all these trees that loaded our structure heavily, they don't realize that they are 12 meters above a, uh, the lower waterfront service road. Another uh, item uh, to note is that we only had a half a meter gap uh, to the adjacent buildings and the seismic drift of the bridge was limited to around 300 millimeters. 
The photo below shows the requirement of continuous traffic access below the new bridge throughout the construction. And the transverse uh, integral cross beams uh, span 16 meters between the columns. Besides the composite action in the girders, we also developed composite action in the, in the cross beams with the following construction sequence. That, uh, firstly, the cast in place uh, pier bends were, uh, were completed. Then the pre-stress uh, pre girders were placed onto the corbel of the inverted T uh, cross beam, followed by the, uh, uh, the, the grouting the, uh, um, of the infill and the third part of the composite uh, section was the deck slab. The forces were accommodated in stages depending on the active parts of the section. For instance, the, uh, the, the shear uh, from a uh, transfer from the, the girders, the girder dead loads, uh, was via the corbel alone, uh, whereas the uh, loads from uh, superimposed dead load, live load and earthquake uh, was transferred via the full section. One advantage of uh, building a bridge between buildings is that it provides a good vantage point for a web camera. Uh, this time lap uh, shows the construction of the bent cross beams, the erection of the, of the girders, the installation of the work platforms and deck formwork. We then see the deck reinforcement being placed and uh, the progressive concrete pause with the pier zones being cast after the adjacent uh, span zones to minimize concrete cracking over the supports. After the uh, pier bends were in place, this uh, 250 meter structure was completed in, in five months. Located near Leipzig, the composite steel box girder bridge over the one kilometer Reichenbach Valley is, is very impressive. It has uh, up to 60 meter high piers, uh, 40 meter to 65 meter incremental launch spans, and 75 meter to 105 meter hoisted spans. The point I hope to make with this project is the need to understand and plan the construction staging properly. Uh, this slide shows my bridge on a page a summary of the basic construction stages, including the incremental launching of the first five spans of the bridge from, from each abutment, and then the hoisting of the five internal haunched spans. I also want to draw your attention to the, uh, the full bridge layout at the top of the page. Now this is similar to the base stage in any analysis uh, model. Uh, in the base stage, uh, all the uh, elements of the bridge are defined and uh, after that you assign the individual groups of elements to the different stages. The photo on the right shows the a superstructure comprised in a single trapezoidal box girder with uh, outrigger supports and this enabled a 28 and a half meter deck width to be supported on a, a single a single uh, box girder. For each of the basic construction stages there were sub-stages such as this incremental launching, a, a, a staging of uh, eight segments with each of the segments being added on. Uh, as the, the bridge was built. And the incremental launch analyses were performed at two meter intervals. In this planning uh, diagram, we have the launch yard on the, on the left uh, with the abutment uh, support at the highlighted uh, support uh, 10. Now as the, the bridge is launched uh, 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 forward, uh, support 10 and other supports uh, move back relative to the, the launch nose until the bridge is in its uh, final position 
matching the base stage that we started off with. In this way, the launch in uh, bending moment and shear force envelopes are determined, and, and that allows us to design uh, the bridge section. Now, some of this construction stage planning is a little easier with the incremental launch methods uh, now available in programs such as, as MIDAS. Similarly, the geometry of the deformed shape of the structure during hoisting had to be understood to ensure the, um, uh, the angle uh, of the newly hoisted segment uh, for, for welding and uh, how much uh, a drop there would be uh, of the free end. Um, and this generates uh, cont continuity forces. Not all of the continuity forces get uh, captured in this way. So we needed to provide force deformations at uh, six of the um, uh, internal uh, piers adjacent to the hoisted spans to complete the, um, uh, 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 to get the correct dead load continuity moments. So the, uh, the moment that we achieved at the end was as if um, the same moment as if we magically placed the one kilometer bridge uh, onto the supports and then let it go. The picture below shows the varying um, pier heights across the valley and uh, shows a, a fairly impressive bridge. I've included the Taiwan high-speed rail framing bridge to demonstrate the benefits of the uh, longer spans and launching possible with composite construction. The uh, highly skewed crossing of the high-speed rail over the over a highway in Taichung County was well, was tended as a precast deck bridge. You can see at the bottom of the slide, uh, it had a forest of support bends. Our composite uh, design alternative allowed a fourfold reduction in the number of support bends. It also allowed for efficient construction with minimal disruption to traffic. After the piers were complete, the three cross beams were erected over the highway during night closures. And the steel box girder could then be launched uh, uh, over each pier and uh, through the steel cross beams. The cross section below shows the steel box uh, launch details at the cross beam. Uh, the obvious benefit of composite construction is that only the steel box needs to be launched. The photo on the right uh, shows that the launch did not disrupt uh, 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 highway traffic in any way. Here we see the steel box girder section with the stiffened plate details. And at the bottom, the launch frame was uh, located on the, the uh, elevated uh, launch platform at the one end of the bridge, where each box girder was welded um, to the previous segment. And uh, this was done under enclosed and controlled conditions. The last photo uh, on the right shows the launch path through the cross beams and, and over each pier. The final case study has been selected to demonstrate the economy that can be achieved through standardized modular construction uh, and this bridge uh, has a composite deck. The uh, Pitt River Cable State Bridge is located in Pitt Meadows close to Vancouver uh, in Canada. The, the longer cable state spans eliminated uh, additional piers. Uh, the piers in this project were extremely expensive because uh, we had a 100 meter depth to found in, uh, very long piles and uh, large pile groups. Once the table was complete, uh, the, the peer table was complete, the modular construction uh, uh, could, uh, could be, uh, begin. The cable stayed uh, steel frames were erected in half widths uh, because we had three cable planes, which was quite unique. This was followed by the placing of the full depth precast panels. The composite section as described previously was created with the stitch pores between the deck panels and along the tops of the main girders and the cross beams. And here we see that we went through uh, one winter uh, during the construction.
The construction staging capabilities of MIDAS is seen in this erection animation. Uh, it was created as a comparison to the analysis model that we used for the, the design. We were particularly impressed with the cable tuning capabilities of MIDAS, which took substantially less time than, than, than our determination of the optimum cable forces. In conclusion, this presentation has hopefully shown that composite construction is an efficient and widely formed, uh, a, a, a widely used form of, of construction um, that can be applied in simple through to more complex structures. We have also seen that the sequence of construction staging is critical uh, to account for the actual behavior of the bridge. Now, uh, there are some papers available. Uh, I have included uh, uh, much more detailed information in the following papers, and I've provided these to the organizers for anyone uh, 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 interested, and uh, I've left my email address there as well. Uh, thank you for your kind attention.